afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. Welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Monday, September 23, 2024, a little up 3.15 p.m. Eastern. Love is our true essence, and love has no limitations of case, caste, religion, race, or nationality. We are all beads strung together on the same thread of love. And to awaken this unity and to spread to others the love that is our inherent nature is the true goal of human life, Amachi. That deserves to be stated many times. Now, most of us on this planet are confused, misdirected, misguided through the programming element of the planet. And it's like we have no choice as babies because we're open vessels, so we're programmed. We're being programmed right now. But then something begins to bubble up within us and things seem to speak to us through our heart minds. And we start realizing if you knew without a shadow of a doubt, that all the thoughts that you embrace, that you give energy to, and you bring into your reality and you experience them, are not yours. Never have been, never will be. But we can't, most of us don't differentiate that because it's like that's the way it is and these are my thoughts. Sometimes the God within does what it can to communicate that, and you say to yourself, something doesn't feel right. You ever done that? And you've already embraced this thought as your own and brought it in and gave it, given it power and brought it into your reality and you're experiencing it. And while you're experiencing it, every now and then this different energy comes in, so to speak. And then you start questioning it. You start saying, wait a minute here. This, this just doesn't seem right. And it doesn't go away. And so you go about it, and then a little bit later it fades off, and then it comes back in. Have you ever said to yourself, something, and it's not your ego mind, you're, just, you're feeling it in your heart mind, and you say, something just, I can't put my finger on it, but it just doesn't feel right. And, but usually it, it does pass. And then sometimes it proves itself to you. And you go, aha, that's what was missing. Now I understand. Now I comprehend. And then you begin discovering little bit at a time, because you've chosen to, because of your childlike curiosity, where you have this wonder, and you wonder about things, and you start looking at things from a whole different perspective or viewpoint. Not like you did before. Some of us call this the beginning of waking up. Some of us will just suppress it, and it'll go away. Others embrace it and then move with it and other things start surfacing. Nothing like you are used to or content with as, as, as things fold out. So you keep moving in that direction and you begin to discover more things. And then your childlike curiosity starts getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Then you decide to go in and go into yourself deeper because there's just something that's pulling you into that direction. You aren't sure what it is, but you go ahead and you follow it and you go in deeper 
and you start discovering things about yourself, and you begin to realize, it's like in these meditations, when you focus on the now, and you're relaxed in your body, and you're still as a statue, and the only thing that you're focused on is your breath rising and falling. And then you say, you know, it's very quiet, peaceful in this state. There's no chatter and noise and thousands of thoughts coming at you. There's no worry, stress, and fear. It's gone. Only in that state does that occur. Now, if you're, if you're programmed year after year after year after year as an open vessel as a child and all the way through adulthood and we continue to become programmed, most of the time, the majority of us will follow that direction, totally oblivious to the other side of it. And, and, and also, we have a tendency to push away anything that disturbs that. We push it away dispel it. No, this is, this is it right here. But some of us begin to realize that I'm not seeing the whole picture. There's something missing. And then you start getting messages. Could be anything. It could be, you could even be at a grocery store and something is directed to you to, to catch your attention. Or you see an advertisement or you're talking with someone and they say something and it hits a spark and it's only meant for you. Nobody else. And then you begin to open up more to yourself from a perspective of not, no judgment or um, analysis or dissecting. You, you open up to yourself and go, I'm finding out things about myself that I never thought about. Now, this isn't, remember, it's gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times, so it's more of an observation. And we realize that there is good and bad and bad and good. It's a balance. Now, some of us succumb to the, the, where it gets out of balance, where you become more... Um, in a negative or whatever you want to call it, bad or uh, type of energy. And we create more of it, and we aren't aware of it because we've been trained and programmed to, thought, to believe that, no, that's it's not you, it's coming from somewhere else. And so that, that suffices, okay? But some of us will discover that everything is me, and I am everything. And you begin to melt away the illusion that you've been placed in. And you start to look at things totally differently, whether it be a blade of grass or a leaf on a tree. Well, that's insignificant. That's small. And, you know, what, that doesn't make any sense. And you hear me talk about the analogy of the drop, the essence of the ocean, and when you, go, when you drop into the ocean, you become the ocean. This is the universe, all connecting universes, all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. That's the ocean. Okay. Now, one would think that, well, Okay, so I'm a drop of this golden ocean, which is everything and nothing. So I'm a drop of this golden ocean. And you're, you're saying to me that I hold the essence to all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever be on it forever. So therefore, when I drop into that ocean, I become that ocean. And that's not really figuratively, that's literally. So then you begin to open up other doors that you didn't know existed. 
you start to discover how this resonates and vibrates with you on a whole different level than what you're used to. And this isn't, has, it has nothing to do with ego mind because you're in this state of total peace and being in the quiet time of this meditation. You're, you're not really thinking at all. And this vast existence, you begin to realize that you had a very powerful role in creating it. Now, our minds are just too small to comprehend that. So we go, on, we go beyond the mind. And we go to where the God is of which we are, which is the pure consciousness. Eventually, some of us will be there in pure consciousness. We will know who and what we are. We will know that we're in a, we've created a physical material uh, experience, temporary, uh, basically because we want to experience. And doesn't it make sense that it's temporary? And we embrace that, we know that. So if you know something truly is temporary, you're going to make the most of it, aren't you? You're not going to just get into a bubble and exist and experience that way because you might as well be dead if that's the case. And there's many of us on this planet that do that. Because why? Because it's safe, it feels secure, and it's comfortable. So when anything is, is, comes in or that you view from that bubble that you feel is threatening to that bubble and in your, uh, where you are at, you become very irritated, frightened, and fearful. Usually when we respond to things with anger and frustration and analysis and judgment, that is purely ego mind because the ego mind is insecure. And it's never satisfied. And as I've said, all it wants is peace. But it doesn't know how to experience peace. And it, it believes that peace is out there. And the examples of that are all around us, generation after generation, because we can see that. We can see it as an observer or watcher. Why, why are, are these people acting this way? Uh, you know, why, what about this conflict and this disturbance and also um, not comprehending fully the conflict, the, the irritation, the aggression uh, that happens. Now, you could be in a group of people, okay? And depending on how you feel at that time. Now, if you felt really good for no apparent reason and you just felt like you were floating and you just felt good, those frequencies emanate out and affect all that that is around you. When you're aware of that, you gravitate towards being that way more and more because it's such a joyable, uplifting, happy, blissful feeling. Obviously, this is what we all wish for in a lot of cases. Right now, there are people on this planet wishing for that. Peace, quiet, ease, grace, happiness, joy, bliss. This is what we truly all strive for with our lives. But it's, it, it is a challenge because we've, we've been computerized to respond a certain way by a certain command and to do things 
by, and to do things by certain influences. Now, when the majority of the population is absorbed in that, and then one might say, well, how does that happen? It's easy. When we're birthed and we're in that baby body, we begin to become programmed. And whatever we're taught, we copy. Because we don't, we, don't, we don't have any resources at that time to refer to. So we copy it. Now, if you did have those resources, you could compare things for yourself and say, no, this isn't, I've done this in a past life. I know this. This, this is not right. This is something that doesn't work. Even though they're telling me that it works, I know it doesn't because I've already experienced it. But we don't have that. So doesn't it make sense that we follow this programming throughout our lives? And you get used to it. So you really, most of the time, you don't question it. You go with it. You know? And we say that, well, this is just the way life is. You're born, you live, you die, okay, and all that in between. And the only reason that that programming exists is because those before you were programmed in a similar way, and so on and so forth throughout the ages. So it is a, it is a constant cycle for us as a species, as a civilization on this planet, that has been going on for eons. And how do you, you know, how do you interrupt that? How does that come about? Because there's those of us who do interrupt it. And it's kind of like, well, you, you wake up. You know, it's, that's what people say. You know, I remember when I woke up and I started looking at things completely differently and the things I, were do, I was doing, um, and how my life was going. And one day, I just was reading something, or I was talking with someone, and it was like, bing, this big floodlight came on, and everything shifted. And then I had a voracious appetite of reading, and looking, and researching, and talking, and, and reviewing, because it was like I've been starved my whole life, and now... I have a banquet table to choose from. And this universe is constantly doing what it can to communicate with us. Abundance, happiness, joy, bliss, which is our natural state of being. And it wants us to experience more and more love every day. Believe it or not, this is one of the great purposes of life. to let in as much love as you possibly can. And there is not a shortage of love in this universe. And the greatest love is already here, all around us now. So some of us will open our hearts just a sliver and allow warm, cozy energy to come in. And believe it or not, you can find it easy to allow yourself to receive love because you are a good person, you have a good heart, and you have good intentions. Believe these things because deep, deep, deep down, you know they are true. And one might say, well, if that's the case, why is everything the way it is? How come I don't feel love like that? How come I'm super protective? Because we protect ourselves, the reason we do is because we, we're protecting our ego. Because remember, the ego is insecure. Why are we insecure? Because of the ego. It's for us to understand the ego and what its purpose is. And then to embrace 
the comprehension that I'm not the ego. I'm that is which is behind the ego. I'm that which is behind the heart-mind. But during the course of our lives, we, we, we experience things. And I've met a lot of people that have experienced a lot of trauma. And it's, it's deep-rooted within them. And so it actually influences their life until they leave the body. And the, and the ironic thing is, is that it's a deep wound, but they won't let go of it. They, want to, they keep it somehow, it, it may sound strange, it gives them comfort. It's like the analogy that I've used before. You're walking along a lazy street, right? A little neighborhood, quiet neighborhood. Doing nothing in particular. And so you're kind of strolling along and you look to your left and you see this older fella in a chair sitting on his porch then you see this old dog laying there, you know, on the porch by his feet. And you, start, you hear this dog kind of whimpering. And it draws your attention and you go, I wonder why he's not doing anything. You know, the dog seems like it's in pain. And he's just totally oblivious to it. So you ask him, you say, sir, you know your dog is in pain? And he says, yeah, I'm aware of that. Well, how come, you know, you don't see what's, what the problem is? Well, you see, my dog is lying on a nail. And it's been lying on that nail for a while. And it doesn't want to get up off the nail because it's become part of him. Even though he's suffering... He's scared to death to leave that nail. So he lays on it and suffers. That's what we do. We go through life, and, and most of us don't wake up, and we suffer. Now, even though we are suffering, we have convinced ourselves, is this the way it is? This is how life is. This is how life is treating me. So we rationalize that, and we continue to lay on the nail throughout our lives. After a while, it doesn't get, it's not as painful, but we still feel it, and we still experience things that aren't pleasant. Now, on the flip side, on the other side, some of us say, you know what? I don't need to keep laying on this nail. I can, I can pull myself off of that nail anytime I want. Now, mind you, I don't know what the pain will be like, but I think I'm going to do that. It's gotten really old. So you pull yourself off the nail, and you're, you're, you're kind of surprised because the pain stops. And you go, wow, this is different. And then you start realizing that I never had to keep laying on that nail. I am completely free and I can create anything I choose or want in this life. I can redirect my life through the God source of what I am in this body, in the now. I can stay on the now anytime I want. I don't have to listen to my ego mind. I can learn about it and master it so that it's no longer my master, it becomes my servant. It's all discovery. And when it happens, we have no idea. It's not like it's, we, you know, we have this laid out and written down. It just happens. And it's a freeing feeling. It's like when you have a lot of stuff, right? Most people worrying about losing the stuff. 
Because that's ego mind. Even, and they don't know it's temporary because to them it's forever. It's, you know, I care to lose that stuff. But then something happens when you lose that stuff. You lose all that stuff. You experience a euphoric feeling of total freedom. You experience total burdenless feeling. And it's the freest you've ever felt in your life. Now, most of us will do what we've been programmed to do. We make a living. We earn monies. We uh, you know, go to the doctor. We do this. We do that, which has been going on for ages through several generations. But then something steps in, and what is that something? It's the God that you are. That's what steps in. When you are open enough with yourself is when the God begins to surface. And that's why I say it's all about you. It's all about you through the heart-mind. You decide whether, you know, whether you're in the fog or whether you're out of the fog. You decide how your life's going to be. Period. All of us do. There's nothing outside of us that does that. We do it. So if we're influenced by the ego mind, we create things that the ego mind is happy about, that likes, wants that. And the mind creates all kinds of stuff because it's, it's, it's a very powerful illusion. And we slip into it. And every single time we focus, we're creating. Now, the majority of us have no clue about that or don't even know that because we've been programmed to be less than who we really are. We've been programmed to be separate than unified. We've been programmed to believe the faults and not the truth. That's, that's a a well-oiled application to the civilization. So what does that do? Well, it kind of splinters us in our belief mechanisms. And if anything disturbs that belief mechanism, we become agitated, protective of it. Why is that? Because the ego mind is your master, and that's why you respond the way you do in those instances. The ego mind is your master. But when you begin to discover that, like through these, these meditations, and you practice more and more, and you start really enjoying being in the now, and then you comprehend why you're in the now. Like, why am I doing this? To master the ego mind. And meditation is the truest form of prayer. You want to really embrace prayer? Meditate. Most people think that meditation is a, you know, a big guru complicated thing that, you know, you can't do and it's just scary and a lot of people just say, forget it, it's too boring. That's ego mind, which is very successful in keeping us away from meditation. And the meditation is our gateway to the gods that we are in these bodies, the pure consciousness. So you can see through programming how we move away from that. But the more we do it, the more we embrace it, and we, the more we begin to discover who and what we actually are. When you're driving a car, you're not the car. See, you're driving the car. You're directing it. You're guiding it. It's up to you where that car is going to go. Now, if you smash that car into a tree, you're guiding the tree, the, the car to the tree. It's like with anything. Anything that you operate, including yourself, 
the pure consciousness and the God is guiding the body. And the body communicates with the God without you knowing about it. See? That's why the body never lies. So it gets a little befuddled for many of us. It seems too complicated, too murky. Many of us don't care to find out the not-so-pleasant parts of ourselves, so we ignore them, or we fear them, so we don't go there. But then you begin to realize that I love every part of myself, the good, the not-so-good, the bad, and embrace all of it. Now, one would get confused and would do it through the ego mind, which is a total wash. But then when you discover the now, and the now is the only way that we can master the ego mind and master our thoughts, you would, you would believe that many of us would gravitate towards this on this planet. But it is a, a super challenge because it takes every ounce of courage that we could ever muster to do that. Just like the dog on the nail, some of us get comfortable. We just, you know, here's, here's my bubble, and I'm just fine here. You don't need to go out there. I don't need to go outside the bubble. I can stay here, and I'm just fine. And many of us do that. There's nothing wrong with that either. But when you do that, you stop experiencing. And then someone would say to you, you know, this is an unknown thing. And you go, really? And they say, yeah. Are you prepared for that? None of us know what's going to be there, but we're intrigued enough and curious enough that we're going to go there. And whatever happens, happens. And then you say to them, you know, I'm good here. You know, you've got no reference, you have no uh, idea of, of what you're going to find in this unknown area, and I'm, I'm good here. And they go, really? You sure? Yeah. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay put. And they go, okay. And then they move on. Now, some of us that are beginning to awaken, that childlike curiosity comes up and they Wow, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, that's why we're going. You think you want to come with us? Wow, that's uh, that's really attractive for me. I, you know, yeah, I'm gonna go with you. Now you know that you have none of us have any idea what's going to be there presented to us. It's totally unknown. We have no reference or anything. But yet, our childlike curiosity motivates us to do so. And then when we do that, those of us that choose to do that, we, we continue to do that. Because all of our possibilities are in the unknown. They're not in our bubble. They're in the unknown. So slowly but surely, some of us begin gravitating more and more to the unknown. We, we stop only viewing one part of the picture. We open up the whole picture. And this is where, when you hear me say, most of us only look at one side of the coin. And when that's interrupted, we become disturbed, aggressive, irritated. But some of us begin to say, wait a minute, there's another side to this coin. I want to know what that is. And you've also heard me say, there's good and bad and there's bad and good. You could be in a brilliant lighted room. I mean, so brilliant, you re it's all white right? And someone comes to you and says, you know there are dark particles in this room? And you look at them and go like they're crazy. 
How can you how can there be dark particles? There always is. You go into a pitch black room where you put your hand in front of your face, you can't see it. You feel it, feel its energy, but you can't see it. And then you hear this somebody else in the room that you can't see say, Do you know there are light particles in this dark room? The yin and the yang? Both sides of the coin? We've been programmed to only view one side of the coin because it's comfortable and it's safer for us. So we don't dare go to the other side of the coin, which to us is an unknown. Nor do we care to. We don't care to even look at them. And this is why so many on this planet have been so misguided. It's like if you just look at a cover of the book and you think you can figure it out without reading it, which you can't without reading a book. So that's the same as two sides of the coin. How are you going to know what the other side's about unless you look at it? And it's proven over and over again with us because of the fact that we're used to that. This is how we've been acclimated. We form our bubbles of security and safety, and that's one side of the coin. Now, most of us are guided to believe that the other side of the coin, if it does exist, right, is bad and it's negative and scary. And so we just say, why would I want to go and peruse the other side of the coin. So most of us don't. But the ones that do start to realize that that half of the picture that they were knowing that was there but they couldn't see it, and then they finally make the leap of faith and say, I know there's another side to this coin. Just like you hear the term, there's another side to this story. Now, a lot of people are told a story, and they choose to believe the story, and that's it. But some of us will say, there's another side to this story. Aren't you interested in knowing that? Nope, I believe this one, and that's all there is to it. Okay, that's fine. But some of us will not do that. Some of us want to know both sides of the story. Even though... The one side is unknown because it's never presented. But some of us still want to see what that other side is because we have that childlike curiosity. And we wonder. I wonder if there's another side to this story. Got to always be another side. There isn't just one side. But we've been taught in many ways and programmed to believe there's only one side. But the one side can look like two sides. Very deceptive. Quote from Osho, The highest phenomenon is when love is a state and not a relationship. Not that you are in love, but that you are love. Also. We're not in a state of love. None of us are. We are all love. Pure, unadulterated love. Look what happens when you discover that you are love that you're not in a state of love, that you are love. When you deeply relax, the vibration of love is that which allows you to deeply relax and naturally exist in a wonderful, vulnerable place that is empowered, open to receive, and free. 
It is not controlling nor resisting life in any way. Most of us resist life. It is appreciating, accepting, and approving of what is. Real love is eager to embrace others and listen to what is really going on beneath the surface. It only knows gentleness and kindness, welcoming with an open, accepting heart the other's anxiety, sadness, and all of their fears. Love is not afraid of anything. It's like the sun, who is just meant to shine bright and give its warm light and life to the world. Some of us discover when we say yes to the vibration of love, we are saying yes to the relaxing, healing energy of acceptance of ourselves first. You are choosing to accept yourself exactly as you are where you are in your life, and allowing any negative critical ideas that you have about yourself are okay too. Love welcomes all, loves all, sees the good in all. It takes in those hard, desperate thoughts of unworthiness, fault, lack, and limitation, and treats them like sweet little orphaned animals who just need a warm home and a cozy hug. When our negative thoughts, right, when your negative thoughts know they are okay, that they are lovable too, they will relax, soften, and let go. There is something so deeply beautiful when we say yes with our hearts to the vibration of love. Now, a lot of us have had trauma. We've had disappointments, emotional, broken hearts, disappointment, and we, we withdraw, see, as that happens. We feel that we need to protect our heart. So we put up these imaginary walls around our heart. You've probably met people like that. You sense it, okay? Where they're just, they're not going to step outside the door to embrace you. They're, they're, you know, they're protecting themselves. They're protecting their hearts. And when we say yes with our hearts to the vibration of love, something magical happens inside the center of our being. It's as if the soul of our life catches on fire and starts blazing its way through life with unstoppable pizzazz and joy. We feel totally alive, turned on by life, and excited about interacting with everyone and everything. We just want to share this incredible experience with everybody because it's just too huge to contain. You ever felt that way? You ever felt like you're going to bust out with love, joy, excitement, enthusiasm? So I give you an invitation that for this week is simple. Practice focusing on the vibration of of love. Say yes in each moment you can to letting in more and more love. You can do it. It's super fun. It's magna glorious. Just look inside yourself. Be honest. Find out what love feels like for you. Trust your body and know that it cannot lie. I dare you to open your heart right now to letting in more love than may feel normal or comfortable. Expand your old perceptions of yourself. Step into a new you. Welcome in this new being who is ready 
in every moment to welcome in life, letting in more and more and more joy. Give life the biggest yes that you've got inside. And you know you're worth it. When you can get centered in real devotion to this vibration, you will discover the most amazing, ridiculously beautiful, awesome life you could ever dream of. I'll join you in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. An easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still, relaxed into your body, focused on the breath rising and falling. When nothing's working, breathe. It's that simple. Just keep your focus for a few minutes on the rising and falling of your breath. Just watch how your body is breathing, breathing you. You do not have to do a thing. It will take care of you. The deeper your breath and the longer you exhale each breath, the deeper you breathe and the longer you exhale each breath, the faster you clear away any problems inside. Breathe deeply for 15 minutes today. You will emerge from the experience completely free from all past issues. The fog of thoughts that was clouding your consciousness will have naturally lifted. Only then will you see that the light of your awareness is as bright and brilliant as the sun. I can feel you breathing in a big, beautiful chest full of light, clean, conscious air right now. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here Tuesday, September 23, 2024, we'll at 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest of the purest, purest. Eternal gratitude at all times. Open your heart and allow the magic to flow in. <laughs>